to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video just a reminder some great news the design of experiments for 21st century engineers the mini tab version has just been released. I know for those of you unfortunate enough to have selected Minitab you have a great deal of difficulty in understanding this software so we've created this special version of this text with the Minitab screenshots. The link to lulu.com where you can buy this book is in the description below and of course you also have the option of purchasing Drink Tea and Read the Paper which is the perfect book to go with your Green Belt or Six Sigma Black Belt training. The link to lulu.com for that book is also in the description below. And of course the other thing that we'd really love you to do, please go to buymeacoffee.com and make a small donation. All of these things, the purchase of the books and the donations, they help keep the channel moving I'm really grateful to all of those people who are currently donating. Many thanks for your support and your help. And now, let's get on with today's video. Welcome to the latest video. And in this video newsletter, what we're going to take a look at is where the principles of lean standard work meet the principles of variation reduction coming from Six Sigma. So we're going to take a look at that in a minute, but just before I get into the subject matter, I just want to say hello to an old colleague. So I believe Trevor, you're now retired. You have a tendency to watch some of my videos. Trevor, if you're watching, good that you're supporting the channel. By the way, this is what me and Trevor used to do. We used to work in a company that made staplers. This is one of the staplers that we used to make and this was engraved the day I left. So I know Trevor that 1991 was the day I left Rexel. It's been 30 years since we worked together. So thanks very much for your support. I hope to have a beer with you sometime. Let's get on to the video. What we're going to take a look at is lean standard work meets Variation Reduction and this is something that came out of some work I was doing last week I was implementing a I was into implementing a pull system so it's a pilot it's a pilot system with a client uh, who wants to develop their their lean capability and we went on site and we worked with the team there to put some um, some pull systems in. Now just to explain where this system was. So this, this company has an off-site warehouse. So like lots of companies, they've got off-site facilities. Everybody tends to have this today. Um, not particularly lean in a way because you're having to buy materials from China three, four, five, six months lead time. So what do you do? You, you're you holding all of that six months of stock off site. And then they have to decide how much material to pull on site. So this is now um, effectively, I would probably call this um, goods inwards. So you've got six months sitting up here we haven't got room for it on site so how much material are we going to pull, pull on site now currently what happens is a planner so the planner puts his head together apparently with the purchasing with somebody from purchasing and they make a decision about how much to pull on site. Okay, now, I want to think about the variability that they deal with. They have to do this every week. So think about what you're doing. This guy, don't know how much he's paid. 
40, 50,000 pound maybe. This guy, don't know how much he's paid, 40, 50,000 pound maybe. These two have to get, they have to put their heads together every week to do this and decide what raw material to pull on site. Now bear in mind, this material is runner material. The MRP system, which you've paid two million pound for, has already said you need it. It should be on site. It should always be on site. There shouldn't be any decisions to be made, but these two fine folks have to soak up their intellectual capacity making this decision every single week. Now, what are they dealing with? Well, what they tend to do is they look at the plan. Okay, so they look at the plan as to what's needed. Um, the plan, by the way, changes constantly. They've also got to think about transport. Okay, and by the way, the transport is not fixed. It's not fixed and it's not definitely available. So they have some transport, but they say if there's a priority elsewhere, then the transport will get used for that. So when we need material here, we're not really sure how much and we're not really sure when it's going to come. And imagine these two guys now, they have to sit down and they have to try and figure this out. So, um, so I mean, they have a plan which has got demand in it, but that demand is changing constantly. So plans could be brought forward, pushed out, etc., etc. So you imagine what's happening to the stock on the shop floor. Sometimes there's bucket loads of it. Sometimes there's too much of it. Sometimes they underestimate and there's too little of it. And of course, there's a third person now in this problem, which of course is the warehouse supervisor. She doesn't know when the material's coming. She doesn't know how much is coming. She doesn't know how much space she's gonna need. She doesn't know how much effort she's gonna take to offload the lorry. So she's having to work out what her priorities are. These two are having to work out their priorities. Look at the money being invested in making a simple decision to bring goods on site. It's just, it's just crazy, and to manage it, bring goods on site, and to manage it. Now, what have we done in order to eliminate variability? Because what we're trying to do is knock off the variables here. So the first variable we're gonna knock off we're gonna put a pull system in. Now we're gonna do this for runner material. So we're gonna have a maximum, we're gonna have a minimum, and we're gonna have a fixed, a fixed order quantity, in other words, a fixed amount, to bring the material on site. So we've identified about five or six raw materials that we can do this with, and we had to decide a maximum, we had to decide a minimum and obviously the difference between the two, the order quantity. So what we did was we've sort of taken these two out of the, we've taken those two out of the decision making. And now what we're saying is, this is runner material. It should always be on site. So when you come to make the plan, you'll always have material that you don't even have to think about it. Why would you have to think about it? Okay, you can imagine when they try to make a plan, they don't have material on site, and then they try to uh, get material on site uh, at sh a very short notice, all the effort that goes into doing that. So we've fixed, we've fixed the amount. Now then, we have a problem though, because you can only do this if you take the variability away. Now, I've taken the variability of the decision-making away, but what I haven't been able to do is to fix the transport. So, although I've tried to fix this based on a fixed lead time, and based on historical 
planning rules. So in other words, batch sizes and things. So I fix this based on that. The problem I've got, I expect the lead time to be one week. But at this point, we haven't fixed the transport. So what I've done is I've fixed one variable. The plan, now the rule. The quantity always comes in. We hit the minimum, we order the, we order the batch size. But this variable still exists. Now what problem is this going to cause me? Now potentially, of course, this minimum is safety stock. It's based on the fact that I've got a one re week lead time. But of course now they randomly, they randomly organize transport. So maybe this will stock out now. This will stock out. Now think about this for a second. This is runner material. It should always be on site and be all, always be available. This isn't a one-off random transport arrangement. This is needed every single week. What I want them to do is to fix the transport. In other words, have a schedule. So, simple thing for me, I would say every Tuesday, every Thursday, we will go to this site and bring material here. Why wouldn't you do that? You are not arranging to take your mates to the pub and saying, I might have a spare seat in the car that you can come with us to the pub to the quiz on Thursday night. This is something that happens every single week. Material is flowing on site at a particular speed. You just fix the transport. Now if I fix the transport, this will work, this will work. None of the intellectual um, horsepower is needed from these two. This person always knows, the supervisor in the warehouse, knows what's happening. They can plan all their activities around that. We've removed the variability from here and we've removed the variability from here. What's it called in Lean? Standard work. What's it called in Six Sigma? Variation reduction. And if you do that, the whole system gets simplified. What do you do with the free time that these three have now got? Now they work on continuous improvement. Now I know what people say, well if I fix the transport, maybe I'll have a lorry that's only 60% full and I'll be wasting transport time. Today that might cost you a little bit of money. It might do, may not. Often when you find this doesn't cost any more money at all when you fix transport. But even if that was the case, if these three work on continuous improvement with their spare time for the next three years, you will make so much money that that little bit of cash on the transport route will pale into insignificance. Remove the variability, free up your intellectual skills, and then make bucket loads of cash. That's what standard work and variance reduction are all about um, and I, I constantly um, talk about the eighth waste uh, in lean uh, which is the um, you know the eighth waste and I say is it really there wasting people's intellectual power well actually here it is again it shows up because what you give these people is a unique problem every week Every week they have to sit down. It's like doing Sudoku every week. Every week you give them a unique problem and you ask them to try and figure out with all the variables, how much stock they need when it needs to be delivered, etc. Soaking up their time, using them to work in the process when you could be using them to work on the process. That is where the eighth waste shows up. You, you have to use everybody's brain to make the process work every day. Lean frees that up. Standard work frees up your intellectual capacity to do continuous improvement and to transform your company. So if we don't, if we don't do this, there is a chance, by the way, I'm not saying it will happen, we're gonna find out, we've implemented the pilot, but there is a chance that those systems will fall over at times. Because if we don't follow the one week replenishment rule, 
<clears throat> that I expect maybe I'm going to get a problem. You remove the variability here, you remove the variability here, you free these people up. Now you can do great things with them. Why would you want them constantly trying to figure out what the hell's going on when you don't have to? Fix the variables, free up your intellectual capacity and make bucket loads more money.